Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back to another C++ tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, we covered tuples. In this tutorial, we will be covering maps. Now a map is just a key and value pair. For example, let's say name and then we add a name like Nick or age and then we add an age like five. So let me give you an example. First we need to include map. Then here we can go std map and we just specify first the key type and then the value type. So in this scenario, I'm going to go and make a string key type and then give it a value type of, let's say, int. So now we have a key of a string and a value of an int. We can now use these brackets here and define our key value pairs. So if we go here, we can then say, and let's go age and let's go nine. So as you can see, the age is of a string value and that should be a comma, not a whatever that was. And then this right here is of an int value. So this defines what type this will be and this defines what type this will be. And here we can go legs and we can say two and I don't know, cars. We can say nine is one rich nine year old, but this is basically a key value pair. And that's the basics of a map. Now, if we want to get the item in a map, we can just, let's say, see out this. And we forgot to give this map a name. I should go and just say person or something. Now person, we can just go person. To get an item in person, we use this square bracket and then we pass in the key. So let's say we want to get the amount of cars this user has. Let's make it 19 just to make it a bit different compared to age. But if we say cars, then we should be getting back 19. And this should be in double quotes, not single quotes, because we're using a string. If we were to compile and run this, we get 19 because there's 19 cars. We can then do something like legs and we can get two legs. We can also give things values, for example, let's go here and say person and friends is equal to nine, to nine, no, 12. So they have 12 friends. And in here we can reference it since it now exists on type person. Do that, we get 12. If we try to get something that doesn't exist and remove that, then we get zero as default. So we get a default value. So it won't just throw an error out of nowhere. Now, this is the easy way to insert a value into a map, but there is another method if you don't like this one. By going person dot insert, then we need to specify the pair, so std pair, and then the types. So now would be this string and int here. So it's these two as pair types and then what we want to insert. So we can go friends and let's go 21. And this is another way to do it. I personally like just assigning it, but this is also if you don't want to assign it, if you want it to be cooler, I think, then you can do that as well. And now I get 21. You can also remove something from a map fairly easily by going from insert all the way to erase. And then here we can maybe erase cars. Now if we do that, we will no longer have cars in our map anymore. So we'll get zero. So that's cool. To get the size of a map, you can just say dot size and this will give us the size of a map. Simple as that. Now we know it's free because one, two, three. We can then empty a map, so completely clear everything inside of a map by going person.clear. And this will clear the map 
and remove everything inside of it. So now nothing here exists anymore. And as you can see, the size is actually zero. So it checked that for us. We can also check if it's empty and we can go empty. So if it's empty, it will return true, which is one. If it is not empty, so if you remove this dot clear, so it's not empty, it will return zero. So this is to check if a map is empty, if it has something in it. To find an item in a map is fairly simple. We can just go here and say person dot find age. And if that is equal to person dot end. Now, if this right here is true, that means that there is no age inside of person because end means basically the end of the map and the end of the map means nothing is there. So if we go like this, we get zero because this isn't true. There is an age inside of this map. If we were to make it something random, then there we go. We get one because it is the end. There's nothing there. Now, while we're here, I would like to show you how to do an if statement in one line. So we already know how an if statement works. If we go here and we say if, pass in the if statement, do something and then else, and then do something. Now let's say we pass in this right here. And in here we just see out item found. And here we see out item found this one up here should be not found not because if it's equal to end it has not been found and this one will be item found because then it is found this is a basic if statement if we run it we get item not found if we change it to something that does exist like age then it will say item found or it should be saying item found and uh, my bad this age should be changed there not at the bottom now, if we run, we'll get item found because age is found here. But you can do this right here. You can do it in one line. And I really like doing this because as you can see, this right here takes up quite a lot of space, about seven lines here. But we can make it take up one. So right here where we say person age, we can then go and put a question mark here. So we're asking, is it this? If it is this, then say item not found. So this right here is the same as this right here. It's just one line and you're using a good question mark. But this way of doing it always, and I mean always requires a colon. So if we go here, we need to use a colon and this means else. So if it's not true, do something else. Item found. This right here, this whole thing, that is equivalent to this if statement here. This is mainly to just do like one thing. It's not meant to do massive amounts of equations or checking if this and it's setting a bunch of things. This is just to check if something is something and then giving it a value back. But that's all this is basically doing. It just gives us a value back of checking it. It's a shorter version of this where this right here is exactly this right here. But this time we don't need to specify brackets and we do not need to specify that this should be what's being printed out because we already have a C out. So we're doing it inside the C out. If you don't quite understand this, it's not super important. It's just so you know, you can use one line or if statement where it's basically, if this is true, then execute this. If it's not true, then execute this. So we're asking if it's true. If it is true, it will do this one. If it's not true, it will do this. Now we can remove this and we can run it. We get item found. If we change this to something that doesn't exist, then we'll get item not found. That's just something that you might be interested in knowing because I didn't think I have ever actually gone through the process of teaching this. Cool. And now one last thing is if you want to loop through a map, we can just go for, and you can say auto 
i is equal to person dot begin and then while i is not equal to person dot end because that would be the end or nothing left then i plus plus now once we have this we can then say c out and let's first try to see out what will happen if we try and just put i here so if we run this we actually get an error because there's not a typed name like that so we can't really do this because this iterator is special so we can go first like this this right here is what you can use to access this first item here if we were to now display this we'll get age cars leg so this will return the first item in this map the second will be the same but this time just second like that so we use a dash and then this greater than symbol and that will allow us to get the values the first and the second value in here where this would be the first and this would be the second and then this would be the first and this would be the second cool now if you're like me and you want to know what this auto actually is then you can just say std map and then the type so in this scenario it would be std string as well as int and then you say colon colon iterator and that is just what the auto filled in for us so we don't have to type that run it we'll get the same output and that is how you can loop through a map and yeah that's the basics of a map in c plus plus thank you all for watching i hope you all enjoyed and i will see you all again in the next c plus plus tutorial